All right, so the modern backyard koi pond is complete, and we're going to show you guys what we did in order to build this. All right, Dami's showing us how deep the pond is. Jump down in the, the deep end. Oh yeah. So we're a little over three feet in the middle. We've got a couple of shelves cut in here, another secondary shelf, and like a little seat type shelf cut in. And that goes all the way around, burying uh, widths so we can put plants and stuff out there. Up here, we're gonna do some kind of a waterfall, but it's all gonna be modern, so it's gonna be very angular using a flat pavers of some sort, hopefully a, a deeper gray color and kind of modern. So it'll trace this. It's uh, 12 feet long down this side and it's 10 feet wide going this way. Of course, with this cut in for our pool. So we've got a fire feature, water, water patio down here. It's gonna be nice. Here we go. Water's going in. We're trying to pull out as many of those wrinkles as we can. You can see we've done a better job here. This side's a little harder, so as we get more water holding down, it gives us something to pull on without lifting the bottom out. So we're going to be removing wrinkles as we go. Never, ever jump in the deep end. I've made some changes, so the initial videos that I was working on are going to be a little different because I removed some of the uh, the shelving that I had on the deep end. So uh, right now we're filling it up and we've been pushing out wrinkles. In fact, I'm just completely soaked in my grub clothes right now so that I can be in there and try and work out as many wrinkles as possible. It's never gonna be perfect, uh, but can't wait to get some uh, big koi in there, some plants and get this new uh, fish zone going. Well, we're moving along with the pond. Uh, now try to get these flat stones to lay in. I've never done it with flat top stones like this around the top and it's a nightmare compared to river rock because you have to get everything level and forward, backward, left, right. And it's just been a nightmare. So uh, I ended up pulling the liner back and putting boards underneath to give a nice flat surface. And it was easier to level for a long board running under. And then we're going to uh, put some cement under these to kind of tie them all together. Now it's not going to adhere to the rubber or anything like that, but what it'll do is it will lock them together as one big uh, shape going around this whole pond uh, that these stones are tied into. So hopefully that'll help keep things a little bit more solid going forward. All right, so we are laying in cement right onto the rubber liner here, trying to keep as much as possible out. And this is just gonna kind of lock all of these together. We've done all the way around so far to the back corner. You can see it sticking out the back. So that'll be one firm base under the whole thing. So hopefully it'll lock it together a little bit. It's not gonna keep them from necessarily falling in if somebody stands on the edge of them, but it's definitely gonna help. We're hot and sweaty and heading back to Home Depot to get some more pond rocks. Uh, these are the uh, medium sized rocks. They're not the uh, like pea gravel or anything like that or you know the smaller stones. But uh, they're not huge big boulder like rocks either. They're just kind of nice river stones. All of this has been pretty much made in a way that it would be pretty easy to uh, repair or work on. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping that is the case. But I'm hoping actually that there's not too many problems. The type of... Uh, Waterfall that I've chosen to do is a little bit problematic with the flat stones because the water just runs along the whole edge uh, But it also wicks back up underneath the uh, the edging and so we're getting some water seeping out So I've got the waterfall foam that I'm going to put in there and try and keep water going where I, I need it to go And we'll see how that does uh, If not, we may have to rethink how that is uh, working as well But it's all just kind of a little bit of playing and having some fun. So here we go. All right, and so here is the finished patio with the pond in the back, our fire pit and the pool, all of it right next to each other. And we've got the nice viewing of the pond from the back windows on the back porch. 
And based on my calculations of this, we're running at about just under 2,000 gallons of water. We've got the deep end that's a little bit deeper than three feet over on pretty much this whole side here that steps up to a, uh, I don't know, 18 inch and then like a 24 inch depth there. So one and a half to two feet uh, where we have this. I've got a little corner ledge as well along that side so I can put plants in that. But this whole section was meant to be the deep end uh, we do have a little bit here that wraps around, so our ledge runs here and around the outside, drops down and comes back up at the top there in case I needed different depths for things. So um, I was just kind of playing around with it. I can always increase the height of that with uh, cinder blocks and whatever, but uh, we've got what's supposed to be yellow lilies here, and then we've got a white one in the back which is already bloomed. This one should be blooming very soon. As you can see, we've got the bud and a second bud about ready to uh, pop up through the water here. And uh, we started out and we cycled this uh, for several weeks before we put fish in. And then we put in uh, goldfish and uh, two smaller koi and then introduced a few other koi as we've gone. So now there's a total of six koi I believe it is, two shabunkins and there were 30 goldfish, little comets to start it and now we're down to 29. Uh, and this actually used to be three uh, waterfalls coming out of this and it's going to be again but my pond master 950 had one of those goldfish go in. We've been having some issues with, I have a, just a second separate filter here that was running the waterfall because I don't get enough pressure from my larger unit back here, my Laguna, uh, and this is rated for I think 2,000 gallons, it's got UV, and so I haven't tucked all these uh, cords in yet until we're ready. I just put it in the ground and uh, now we'll go ahead and I'll take the, uh, the hoses off and I'll route it underneath the rocks here along the side and back out and uh, we'll get a, a fake rock for there. But we've got one fake rock here in the middle and it's covering up a splitter that we have to split the water feed. See if I can get it, show you here real quick. Yeah, so we should have three hoses of water going out. You can see the black hose right now is what I'm running. Um, but, like I said, we had an issue with uh, the filter, which is really not meant to filter the pond, it's just meant to keep the fish from getting into our filter here while I was gone. Uh, it broke off here on this pond master filter and uh, we just stuck it back in because we needed the water flow from the uh, the fountain for oxygenation and all that and this one wasn't running and so because uh, I don't like to keep this one running all the time because all the water movement isn't awesome I guess for the lily pads but there's times I like the sound of it and so we'll turn it on like right now the fish love to swim through it, it pushes them up out of the water, it's a lot of fun. But it ended up taking one of the small goldfish into the tube of that filter and he got into the impeller and broke it. So uh, I have to order a new impeller for that to get the uh, waterfall back to how I want it. For now we're just doing the single uh, flow out of there. But we're going for that very modern look with the uh, single line there. And you'll see, uh, I have video of it working with the three that I'll pop in here. but. We've got a bunch of uh, water hyacinth. They don't do super great because the, uh, the the koi like to eat the roots off it, but you know it's natural and it helps a little bit. So I don't mind having them in. They're not growing huge or anything. They are splitting and staying small, and I'm going through and weeding them out and removing uh, removing some of them uh, and trying to keep it cleaner looking. Uh, even with these, they they're eating off the uh, the lily pads as you can see here. They're nibbling them away, and so I have to go in and remove that yellowing one right there. I don't like it to decompose in here as, as much as I can. I try and keep it clean of that. And I've got a little pool net, an extendable pool net that I go through and clean it all out with, but it's kind of an overview. I'll show you when now with it being still, we'll turn off the, uh, the pump here, and we'll get a better look at some of the fish that are down in here, uh, including uh, C-3PO, the gold koi there. Some of the other features that we wanted to have in here were these grasses in the background. 
So this space will be kind of blocked off from seeing uh, back into the yard further. It'll be its own little serene area. Uh, I've put a Japanese maple here, a red one, it's a dwarf. And I want that to kind of hang out over the water, almost like a small bonsai. Uh, we've got a little egret set up to help scare away egrets. But it's also, I think, close enough to our house that hopefully they won't brave it to come over here. But it's a pretty metal one. And we'll move it around to try and make it seem as real as possible. But here you can see the, uh, the red maple. I want those to just kind of feel very Japanese. Zen garden kind of feel. Potted here on the side to keep it smaller and make it more like a bonsai like I was saying. So we built this side and you'll actually see is a step lower than the rest of the pond. And that was intentional. That was to make this kind of the overflow. If we get heavy rain, we want it to come away from the house. Uh, so it's a whole inch lower and then in that back corner it's even the lowest spot by the waterfall to kind of go back into the yard that way. So because the way that the pool deck here or the concrete is slanted I had to put in a channel here that I've got a little tube in that helps to direct the water out into the middle there. Um, corrugated pipe and then I did it here as well along the house. I put in a, a corrugated pipe to keep this from uh, gathering water because it's kind of a channel uh, that's between two higher points so that want that water to run out and beyond so that's what we've got going on really excited about it liking the looks of it very modern here it is where it's still without it going you can see all the fish are coming up here usually when I'm here they probably think it's feeding time there's a shabunkin so there's actually the first koi he wasn't the smallest I get a good deal on him uh, right here in the middle next to the gold one was the first koi and I kept him in a tank for a little bit because I got him for eight dollars and he was probably already 10 to 12 inches which was a good price for him the rest I've spent about 12 to 15 on uh, some of these other koi that are in here we've got I prefer and it's hard because everybody carries uh, the butterfly koi with the uh, the longer fins and I actually don't prefer those I know most people do it's you know supposed to be prettier but I prefer the the standard length uh, or the more of the carp and goldfish style fins on them so uh, I've preferred to get that and that's what the gold one has and that's what this one right here has my uh, first one who's swimming along right there and so I went back to find another one, hoping that they'd have another one like him at Petco, where I got the good deal on him. And uh, they didn't, but my boy said, whoa, look at this one, Dad. And it was the uh, C-3PO is what they were calling him, who's coming up right there, the big gold one. And they were not supposed to get one that large at the store, and so they gave me a good deal on him uh, to get rid of him. And I said, well, I can't pass that up, so got one large one already in here and it's fun to watch him swim around but it's taken a while for the water to actually clear up after we set it up it is in direct sunlight so uh, that definitely means that we're getting more algae and stuff to deal with but it uh, the UV on this new filter the Laguna adding that in has uh, really kind of cleared it up so having a lot of uh, power to be able to combat the the sun look at him school that's part of the reason that I got the goldfish was the koi that we've had in the past have been kind of shy at first and having the goldfish swimming um, all around the koi tend to jump into that pack and stay with them so it's kind of fun to have them we'll probably have to to cull it back a little bit because we are overcrowded for a 2,000 gallon pond I would say so you can see how clear it is now. You can actually see the wrinkles in here and uh, you can actually see all the way to the bottom which you can't because of the reflections on video but in person you can see all the way down to the bottom uh, where it's almost four feet deep. So it's pretty clear which means that we're gonna have to get the caves and stuff in here real quick for the koi. But um, 
we are thinking about maybe experimenting with a radio as well with talk radio on they say that that helps that they don't like the herons and the egrets don't like the the voices so but here they all are look at them All right, so that's a quick look at our modern backyard koi pond that we have here. It's about 2,000 gallons, like I said, and uh, we've invested in all of the rock that's around it and uh, as well as the escaping on the sides. And I got a great deal on the long uh, six-footers where I got two of them for 100 bucks, which that's a lot of stone for 100 bucks. The filter and the liner are the most expensive parts, and the rest of it uh, we, we got in around it. So probably all in with plants, fish, and everything. We're probably looking at about 1300 bucks into the pond right now. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you uh, enjoy this little build video that we have. And uh, we're going to get back to enjoying the pond. So we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.